Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to wire a South African plug. I've got different models here and the reason for that is you will see at the back they're slightly different. Right, so there you go. I'm now showing you the back of these plugs and that's where you're going to be wiring it. And you can see that they are not all the same. Therefore, I'm going to show you how to wire it, show you the principles, and you'll be able to wire any type of plug. Right, so this is a lab setup. Now, in your case, you might find your plug is already in the wall. This happens to be a surface mount plug, but the principles remain the same. In your case, you'll probably find it's in the wall and it's in one of these. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is switch off the power. So go to your DB board and make sure the power is off. Right, so I've unscrewed it and now I'm taking it out. Right, now something that's worth noting is can you see these screws? They are offset. This one is higher than that one, which means you have a limitation here because this particular cover, as you can see, has the screws offset. But often you'll find that that is not the case. For example, if I show you this one, the screws are not offset. There and there, they are not offset, which means that if you want to put this make on this box, you might find it's going to be a bit challenging. So this is something to consider and I will show you what happens with this one if I open the faceplate so as you can see here I'm taking the faceplate off and there is the plug and immediately you can notice that this one would not fit because look the screws are not aligned and also what you'll notice is this particular one has two parts there's a faceplate and then the remainder if you have a look at this one the faceplate and the fitting are one piece right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this and then I'm going to show you how to wire all of these plugs now for your reference, the live is generally red in color and the neutral is generally black in color. In your layout, it might be different, but usually the brown or the red is live. Right, I'm first going to show you how to wire this plug. If you have a look at the back, you can see there's an L. L signifies the live wire, which is red. If you have a look on this side, you can see it says N. N stands for neutral. And in the middle, there's an earth sign. Sometimes it'll just be that symbol and sometimes it'll say E. You can see that symbol there signifies earth. So that tells me that the middle terminal there is for earth. So what I'm going to do now is going to show you how to get the wires ready and then I will wire this. Then I'll show you the other plugs. Right now, in this case, the wires have already been prepared. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this. So I'm going to show you how to get the wires ready. I'm going to show you how to remove the insulation here. Now, you just need to remove about 10 millimeters. Now, the best tool for that is a wire stripper. Now, the reason for using the wire stripper, as you can see, even when I close it, it leaves a opening there. And the reason for that is it stops the blades from embedding into the copper. And I'll show you why that's important. If you use side cutters and you are too rough and you cut too firmly, you cut through the jacket and you've cut a little bit into the copper, this is what's going to happen. It's actually broken off. And I'll show you that again. Right, so there I've used the side cutters and what happened is I actually embedded through the jacket into the copper which is incorrect because if I remove a little bit more, I'll just show you what the problem there is. If you have a look at that, I've actually dented or gouged into this copper. That means that if you go like this, as you can see, it starts to open the copper and tear it because now when I bend it back, it just breaks off. Right, so it's best to use a wire stripper, so I'll go like that, twist and pull, and it does not damage the wire at all. The copper is still intact. Right, if you don't have wire strippers, you can use side cutters, but I'll just show you the technique. What you want to do is you just want to cut maybe halfway. I've not cut through the insulation, I've just embedded a little bit into the insulation, but not through. And I'll just do it on the side there. And if I bend this, you can see that I have not gone through the insulation. So all I need to do now is pull. So I've weakened the insulation here so it allows me to pull. Now I'm not cutting, I'm just using the side cutters for grip and all I'm doing is I'm pulling the wire away while making sure the side cutters stay open like that. I'm just using the side cutters almost as a gripping tool. So as you can see now I'm just pulling rather than cutting. Now I've exposed the copper, now I can wire this into the plug. So it says N, N is for neutral so that goes like that. And then you've got the live, which is red, so that goes in there. And then I'm just twisting the earth, because this is stranded, and I'm going to put this into the earth terminal over there. Right, now I just check. L for live, E for earth, N for neutral. 
now it's time to put this back what i do recommend is you do one last tightening sequence so just go around one more time and re-tighten the screws when you put this in you don't just shove it in there what you want to do is you want to curl these wires neatly just make sure you observe where this earth wire goes you don't want it to cross over like that or like that you want it to be straight like that because sometimes you may have cut too much of the insulation off and therefore the copper of the earth might touch the live right so i'm observing it as i put it in and there we go the plug is now ready and i can put the faceplate screws back on right so here are some tips if you have a look you can see that the screw was fastened onto the copper now at times you might find that the hole is too big and this thing might be sitting on the side If you want to, you can make a loop like that. But just remember to expose enough of the copper. Right, now I just want to show you a tip. If you've cut this too short and it looks like that, and now you put it in here, this is what's going to happen. While visually inspecting it, it looks like it's in, and look, it's tight, it's not coming out. But what has happened is the screw is fastened partially on the insulation, and probably only a little bit on the copper. So what happens is it doesn't make good contact and it starts to arc. Arcing causes a lot of heat. You'll find this wire discolors. You might even find the plug face here discolors. It can become a fire hazard. And if I open it, you can see that's what has happened. If you have a look, the screw has gone through the insulation. It is touching the copper, but if you look at the back, you can see that at the back, the back is no longer touching the copper inside here. And why that's a problem is it reduces the conductivity. So make sure you cut enough of the jacket so that it can reach all the way inside there and the screw can fasten directly onto the copper and not the jacket. Now, another mistake that people make is they cut too much of the jacket off. So they've exposed too much of the copper and I'll just show you what the problem with that is. So now it looks like that and as you can see the live is totally exposed and here's the earth and it could have even been the neutral but what happens is when you close this you'll see that it might touch and you've got a dead short. Also this is a shock hazard so this is incorrect. Right now I'm going to show you how to wire this particular plug. This is manufactured by Crab Tree. I've removed the faceplate screws and as you can see if you look at the back it's quite different. Now there it says N for neutral, there it says live but you can see they've got a jumper going from there to there and the reason being is this is the switch as you can see to switch the plug on and off. Now on the one that I just wired you can see that it's also got the switch but they've internally wired that switch. On this Crabtree model, all they've done is they've put a jumper from the live terminal to the switch. So all we need to do is connect the live to the other side of the switch, which is this side over here. So there we go. We've got neutral, live, and earth. And you can see that this one is also different. The earth is sitting on the frame. So I'll show you how to wire this. First, I'm going to insert the live into the switch side. Right, so there's the live going into the one terminal of the switch, the output of the switch going to the live terminal of the plug. Right, so that was already pre-wired. Now I just need to install the neutral. Right, so there it says N and the black wire is neutral. Right, so the last thing is just the earth. Now there is the earth. Now your earth may also look like this. It might be a solid core cable, but in this case it happens to be a multi-core cable. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the pliers just to keep them all together. It's very important that when you are using standard wire that the wires stay together. The screw must not separate the wires. Right, so there is the crab tree plug. There's the neutral, the earth, the live. And then you'll insert that like that. Put your faceplate screws. Right, now here is another crab tree fitting. And as you can see, it takes the space of a double. That is a double box, even though it is just a single plug. And I'll just show you how to wire this one. Follow the same procedures that I've just shown you. The neutral is going there. The earth is going there on the frame. And the live, in this case, is going here in the middle. So here, in this particular one, the live is sitting in the middle. So in this case, you'll thread it through the middle like that. And you will tighten the screw. Just make sure the screw fastens onto the copper. Because as you can see in this case, the cable can come out the other side. Therefore, you must just make sure that the screw fastens on the copper. 
So I'll pull that back like that. Right, so here is another one, also with a face plate, so you'll remove the face plate. Right, in this case, you'll notice there's a slight difference in how the cable is tightened inside there. Now, usually it's a screw, but in this case, they follow what we normally use on a circuit breaker, and this is a moving platform. So if I show you, you can see that that platform moves and it actually squeezes the cable together. So what you must do is you first open that, and now you insert the wire, and then you fasten the screw. Now if you look inside there, that moving plate must fasten onto the copper. It must not squeeze the jacket. Otherwise you'll have that same problem I mentioned earlier where you do not have good conductivity and it tends to arc. So as you can see, the neutral is now done. Now I just need to do the live and the earth. Right, so there we go. Live, earth, neutral. It's always a good idea to re-tighten the screws just to make sure because after you fiddle with this, you might find that the copper moves and seats and therefore the screw can be re-tightened. So re-tighten it and then you can close the plug. Right, now you may have seen this type of plug before and the red signifies emergency power and what you'll also notice is you can see that the earth pin or the earth prong is beveled there. Whereas if you look at this one, it is round and this one is beveled. So this takes what we call a red plug and it's got a bevel. You also get a blue one where the bevel is at a slight angle. Now I'll just show you the emergency plug. Now what you'll also notice is this is a double. These do come in singles, but I'm just going to show you on the double. Now this is the CBI brand and what you need to do is you need to clip off the side there as you can see I've unclipped it and there are two screws there now those screws are for fastening the plug onto the box and you'll do the same with the bottom you unclip this and you'll see the two screws and that fastens onto the box so there you can see that's how it would be the box would be like that now I'll just show you the wiring layout Right, now on this particular brand, you can see there is the live at the top, there's the neutral, and there is the earth. Even though it's a double plug, you only do one connection, one live, one earth, one neutral. Right, so there's the earth, there's the live, then the neutral. Just a tip, when you are using the CBI plugs, just make sure you expose enough copper. You'll notice that the hole is quite deep and the screw embeds a little bit higher up on the exposed copper. Right, so there you can see it fastens a little bit higher up. Now the last plug is this one and it's got these USB chargers and not all of them are like this. Um, this is a more complicated one and if you have a look at the back you can see you've got a couple of circuits here. You've got live neutral earth for the plug part. We've got a USB charger and then a two prong plug option. So therefore we've actually got to wire this three times. Right, so there is the live coming in from the supply and as you can see I've put jumpers. Right, so this is the live terminal. How I know is there's an L over there signifying live. That is neutral and that is earth. And then over here, if you look here again, it is upside down, but there is a live for the USB charging side. So you can see I've gone to live, 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 live. So all the lives are effectively connected to each other. Then you're going to do the same with the neutral. You'll go the neutral, neutral, then neutral. And then you'll do the same with the earth. If in your case your wire looks like this, please twist it before you put it into the plug. Right, so there I've twisted it before I put it into the plug. Reason being is when the screw fastens onto the copper, it tends to split the cables and that is not good. We want the screw to fasten onto all the cables as a group. And that is sometimes why you might see lugs that look like this, especially for stranded copper.